Hi, good morning. My name is Ryan Fernando and you and I today are going to walk through your gut. Uh, this is a video for all the people who have any indigestion, gas, bloating, irritable bowel syndrome, constipation or anything related to your gut and your brain including anxiety and depression. So I want to talk to you about the gut system which starts from the mouth, goes down to your esophagus, which is the pipeline that goes down the stomach. A lot of us have H. pylori bacteria, acidity, uh, you know, uh, ulcers, and then you go down into the small intestine where you're not supposed to have too much of bacteria and you get what is known as SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So a lot of belching and burping, which should not technically happen. And then you go down to the large intestine where your microbiome, it's all the bacteria and all that get completely go haywire and stuff like that. And you come down to your poop canal where your potty is there, you have constipation, you have loose motions, you have incomplete bowel evacuation and everything from piles, fistula, hemorrhoids, all related to an entire system called the gastrointestinal system. So today I want to share with you a report which is all about the microbiome. Now going forward, what I want to do is I want to give you a few insight and uh, if you don't like this video, please skip and go away. But uh, everybody has a gut system. Everybody needs to have this education and this knowledge. So bear with me with this short video as I educate you on how you can do a crystal ball gazing into your future of your gut which means I'm the astrologer of your gut, except this is not hearsay, this is scientific. Now you have 30 trillion cells in the human body related to your RBCs, but you have 40 trillion cells which are related to your bacteria. So are you bacteria, are you a microorganism, or are you a human organism? So uh, I do believe that over centuries of evolution, we are well evolved to work with the bacteria in nature. However, with a lot of our industrialization, aseptic living, a lot of chemicals, sanitizers, pesticides, insecticides, and also uh, antibiotics and things like that, we have upset the gut micro microflora. Now, I want to give you a few insights. Women are two times as likely to, suffer, to, to, to um, suffer from gut issues, okay? 62% of people worldwide suffer from complaints such as digestion, constipation. I work with children. Children between the ages of 9 and 16 cannot communicate or are too embarrassed to tell their parents that they are constipated. Parents are too busy in their jobs to figure out that the children are not pooping on time. I keep a record of when my kid goes to poop. I sometimes tell him, don't flush, I want to look at your poop. And then as you get older, you know, when you go to work, you get people which are, who come in very angry. If you don't clear your bowel in the morning, you're going to be angry. And the fault is the parent for not training that kid to have an early morning bowel movement. So then, you know, your, your circadian rhythm, which is the body clock to the sunset and sunrise and your poop clock go completely misaligned. 95% of serotonin. Serotonin is what makes you happy. Serotonin is what makes you calm. Is synthesized in the gut. Believe me, the number of cases that I get and I'm counseling people and you're sitting across me in Zoom or in my nutritional counseling room, I can tell you within five minutes whether your, your gut is gone just by the words you use. People who use positive words have a happy gut. So we ought to change your gut to a microbiome, good microbiome, okay? And all of this corona and COVID and all, everyone's talking about, yeah, let's put kada, let's put vitamin C, let's put everything. If you can strengthen your gut, and I've got secrets to strengthen your gut in today's thing. The world is giving a lot of general tips. Today's video, I am talking about the gut microbiome and how do you reprogram it. But before you reprogram it, you got to test it. Okay. So what could be the uh, things with the microbiome? Okay. So the entire gut could have things. Gut means stomach, small intestine, large intestine, colon, rectum. So everything. Okay. You could have gas bloating. You could have mental issues, brain fog. I remember once when um, I, I did not know that I had an allergy to gluten and dairy. I remember I could do like four or five hours of counseling. I would always have this brain fog and you know, find it difficult. So I've always had a dietitian with me, like an assist to help me when I my mind starts brain fogging up. So this is a public confession, right? But when I went and done, did my DNA test for gluten and lactose, it disappeared. So vitamin and mineral deficiencies, 
do you know that the intestine is a beautiful pipeline with lovely uh, carpets inside that absorb all the nutrients and I'm doing my fingers like this because they have microvilli. So when you eat the wrong foods, your beautiful carpet finger like production becomes tubs. And so all the nutrition instead of going through and getting caught and absorbed the micronutrients of vitamins and minerals, you get these tubs. So all the nutrition just bounces off in your intestine and washes out. So you have loose stools, loose poop. Think of it, if you have loose explosive uh, poop and you don't have beautifully formed stool, most of your nutrition is not getting absorbed. Autoimmune disorders, alopecia, erythema, to psoriasis, eczema. People say, sir, I got psoriasis, I got eczema. Are beta, you take your skin and turn it inside. My skin on the outside, I turn it on inside. That's my skin inside my gut. If you have skin gut problems inside, it's going to show on your outside skin. So everything from dandruff to psoriasis to eczema to vitiligo to dry chicken skin. I had a lady yesterday saying to me, my skin's looking amazing in just one week on your diet because we are aligning the gut. So a lot of over uh, over abuse of uh, uh, you know antibiotics and stress. I can't I can't tell you I can't document stress. So the problem is if I can't document stress, then I scratch my head and say, hey, you know what? Let me go and check your microbiome. So I feel microbiome is the entire population in your gut, all of these bacteria and good guys and the back guys and maybe fungal overgrowth and yeast overgrowth and all of this jagada that is like one full city inside your in your in your body. And I said it's 40 trillion, okay? Do you need a gut reset? So so basically from my perspective. To explain to you in very very simple terms you have good bacteria and you have bad bacteria imagine the good bacteria getting that pow bhaji that you ate or that celery that you ate or that carrot that you ate or simple dal chawal roti and the good bacteria says wow let's eat this and we'll produce happy molecules let's produce breakdown of these molecules and give it to the blood the bad bacteria say, ha, 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 we are going to ferment this and create some disco molecules in your body. And those disco molecules go into your blood and create a disco effect in your body. Now, this might not be good disco. That might, this might be a lot of bad disco. Okay. So at the end of the day, you need to understand when you were younger, you didn't have gut problem because this slide is showing you the diversity of the organisms, the bacteriodates, Firmicutes, Actinobacter. These are the ratios on how the bacteria should be. You will be shocked when I start showing you the microbiome report, how people's things go haywire. Second point, anybody above the age of 50 has to do the microbiome test. Trust me, it's the greatest gift you can give to your parents. What do I do? I need a poop sample. Poop sample is collected, put into a container, sent to a lab to me here in Bangalore. And then we do the DNA fingerprinting of the population of bacteria in you. I am working right now with an 82 year old person and we're trying to change his entire gut microbiome, which is in dysbiosis. Dysbiosis means it's, it's not in good control. So let me, let me show you the microbiome report. Okay. So this is the microbiome report. And, and basically this is what we'll get, you know, there's a gut microbiome index, the abundance. So let me quickly show you and walk through it. If you're getting bored, please leave the video. If you think this video is valid for your spouse or your brother or your sister who has constant gut problems, please share this with them. I'm telling you upfront, it's 20,000 rupees to do this test, but you know what? You spend 45 and 60,000 rupees on a computer and that gives you information. It makes your life easier. The microbiome is going to do exactly that figure out what foods to eat and not to eat. So if I can just go through this very, very quickly, there's an index here. So when this person's poop was analyzed, analyzed, it takes three weeks to do it. They have got a gut dysbiosis. So the gut dysbiosis is meaning that the gut is not healthy. Now, this score is being given by the microbiome lab. So what they did is they went in and they found out the ratio, like Firmicutes was 65%, Bacteroides was 29%, Actinobacter was 0.52. So all of this needs to be higher so that it doesn't become bad for the gut. Okay, like total pathogen in this person is 8.53 when it should be lesser than 2%. So all, as it is, I already know that, okay, this person's gut is imbalanced. Now, picture this. Doctor, I got pain in my stomach. Doctor, I got constipation. Doctor, I've not had uh, proper stools and everything. Okay, prescription. Where is the analysis of the gut? Where is the analysis of the poop? Where is the analysis of your diet? We are living in the 21st century, which means if you have an issue, we are doing testing, right? 
If you get coronavirus, oh, I got coronavirus fever. No, you do the RT-PCR test. When your stomach is hurting and you're constipated, what do you do? Do you do a breath test? Do you do a saliva test? Do you do a genetic test? Do you do a blood test? Do you do a poop analysis test? My suggestion is do the poop microbiome genetic analysis test. It will tell you the population of all the bacteria. Now, hang on, hang on. Let's figure out what we have, okay? We have the list of top bacterial pathogens. Imagine if you could give this list to your gastroenterologist. You know what's the first thing they will say? This is not required. Why? Because they want to do trial by fire error and give you all the possible broad spectrum antibiotics to get your condition under control. But when medicine has advanced, I repeat, when medical genetics has advanced and our current crop of doctors do not have the genetic training, then it's nice for you to take matters into your own hand and ask for microbiome tests like a blood test. Because if you come to know that you have bacteriorides vulgatus, we suddenly know there are certain foods that you should not give this person which cause the propagation of these bad bacteria. Or if you work with the clinical lab, that doctor knows exactly which antibiotic they might need to give you for 5 to 10 days to bring this population down. But let me tell you something. When we work at the coordination clinics, we don't do it this way. What we do is we work at the gut and look at food. So look at the common fungal pathogens. I was so happy this person had a fungal infection in the toes and all. So we did not have anything in the gut as yet. So this, the, it was still on the skin level. So pretty, pretty good. We need to get all of these Staphylococcus aureus, which is very high. So a staph infection, how do you bring it down? We bring it down with the right herbs. We bring it down with the right probiotics. We bring it down with the right food. So basically what this microbiome report does is it will also tell me all the good bacteria. Huh? So look at the beneficial bacteria, 7.42 feca fecal bacterium prosnutsi. Okay very very Russian name but let's look at it 7.42 this should be around 15 16 so once I start getting all of this check out this guy yeah he's got everything low 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 no wonder he's complaining to me about constipation erratic bowel movement uh, you know feeling miserable after having a potty so we need to change all of these things all of these things we need to change 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 and it's a new science it's a new science where the nutritionist says, oh, you got all of these good bacteria that don't exist. So what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Look at this. So many lactobacillus ruteri, beneficial lactobacillus ruteri uh, and lactobacillus ramenosus. Both are zero. I'll tell you a story. They did this research on rats. Okay. Sterile rats. Okay. So one group, they gave this lactobacillus ramenosus. They fed the rat. Chuk, 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 chuk. And the other group of rats, they said, no, we're not going to feed you anything. Then boom, they throw these rats into the water and told them, swim, beta, swim. Now, the guys that got ramenosis, I think it was ramenosis and plantaris, lactobacillus plantaris, they swam for 17% longer. What the scientists concluded that the will to live, motivation, feel good factor, grit comes from your gut. And this gentleman or this lady whose test has come to me has got zero zero. So the will to live, I believe from the rat study is lower. Hang on. You don't want me to compare it a uh, human body to rat in a rat study, clinical study. Absolutely fine. But think about it. You're supposed to have in a good person. This would be anywhere from two to 5%. So there's a lacking. That means years of antibiotic abuse, BP abuse, uh, uh, di and diabetes abuse, uh, heart pressure medication, boom, 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 all of that you keep into your body. All of these bacteria are going to be saying that I'm getting killed by all of these uh, bombs dropping on me, the, the, the foreign bombs dropping into my body. So uh, basically what we do is we get into it and the lab comes back to me and says, hey, you know what, in vegetables, you can give all of these foods, you can avoid these foods. So basically what we are doing is we're looking at all the things in the diet. And for example, under the vegetables, we have a gut restoration. Okay. So, so for me, the gut restoration means a 21 day cycle. In that 21 days, I can give the foods which say gut maintenance to change the microflora. And four months later, I do the microbiome test again, if you wish. But I'm telling you, people who have done the microbiome testing begin to see results after four weeks.
because we have just eliminated things. For example, I'm not supposed to give this person broccoli and cauliflower in the first 21 days. Okay. And then we go through various foods like, I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in my right mind for, a, for this client, how would I know to avoid carrot, potato and tapioca? So what it's telling me to rechange the gut microflora, don't give these foods because it will cause the growth of certain bacteria which are pathogenic and inhibit the growth of the good bacteria. Like for example, I love giving kale. Oh, kale is so good. It's anti-aging. It's got great amount like it's better than spinach, blah, 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 everything. Sweet potato. Yum. So it's come across to me that, hey, don't give this person. And I actually, for a person, have avoided these foods and they are now saying that the gut is actually improving. And there are so many things in your dals, like, okay, so in this person, all the dals, they're saying which are the superfoods. So, you know, I can give amaranth, buckwheat, navy beans. Don't give quinoa in the first gut restoration phase. So, uh, hey, avoid green peas. So just one thing, there's a filter, okay? There's a, there's a filter which is called the food intolerance and the food allergy report, food sensitivity report. That's my first filter. Uh, and then my second filter is a microbiome filter. And then my third filter is the genetic filter. So green peas, if they say don't give it in the blood filter, I'm like, okay, blood test, no green peas. In the microbiome, don't give green peas, take it out. So that way I build a population of foods to give or not to give. And I think this is what is called a squa discover the capacity for a person. That's why I named a clinic qua nutrition. For example, in fruits, almost everything is there in the list, but don't give grapes in the gut restoration. Avoid banana. The person loves banana. What do I do? Well, well, you don't eat banana because your microbiome does not like it. No, but banana is very good for health. The entire premise of the universe today is generality when information is being disseminated. When it comes to your health, Learn the concept of qua. Is it customized to my qua? Qua means my capacity. So I do believe that the future 10 years from now will be custom nutrition, custom supplementation, custom medication. Did you know statins? You can check for a gene in your body and figure out whether statins work or not work in your body. Apparently, 25% of people also, I don't remember the statistics clearly, but nearly one fourth of the population do not respond to statins. Yet, we will still do generalized medicine practice. So I do believe the future is going to be customization. Uh, Quan Nutrition does that customization. And that's the reason I make these videos, hoping that you're that person that believes in customization. Most of the people would have dropped off at two minutes. I don't care if you've watched the video till this far. Number one, the money that you spend to customize your diet, your nutrition, and your health will be the cost of the latest iPhone uh, 128 GB, uh, the max version. That's what you would spend. But you would have six times the return on the investment, unlike when I take my Apple laptop and drop it down on the floor and it breaks. You will get six times the return on your health by just living longer, eating smarter, eating healthier, pooping better. So there's a lot of stuff that is there in this report. Okay. Like in this person, I'm not supposed to give palm oil, vanaspati, all your food that you order from Zomato and Swiggy, which is outside the restaurants, they are not using expensive oil. They're not cooking with coconut oil. They're not cooking with olive oil. It's too expensive. Palm oil is the cheapest oil. Okay. So I'm not supposed to give this person safflower oil. My genetic test said to give this person pufa, which is safflower. So I happily prescribe uh, safflower. So now suddenly if I've done the microbiome, I'm going in and saying, uh, your, your genetic report said you could have coconut oil. So I'm going to go with coconut oil and I'm not going to give you olive oil because your olive oil in your genetic report said that MUFA is bad for you. So I, I would kind of look at the balance in terms of, do I want to first get the gut in alignment? So maybe I'll give the olive oil or oh, no, no, Ryan, don't give the olive oil right now. We could survive on coconut oil. We could give, uh, we could give uh, sesame oil, till oil, and we can give so many other oils that are there, right? So we could give sunflower, granite. So I think this is really, really good in terms of what I need to do. And in terms of spices, whoa. You know, don't give this guy uh, black cumin seeds. Oh, in a COVID time, I've told everyone, take black cumin seeds. Very, very, very good because it's got antiviral properties. But for this person, no black cumin seeds in his kada. So you got to figure out how we do all of these things. So I believe that there's a lot that you can learn from here. And um, 
this is the microbiome kit it comes to you at your home um, it's a small bottle inside uh, you put a plastic film across your commode your pot you poop on top of that plastic film you get up take a scoop there's a scoop in the bottle that comes in you put it into the bottle which has a preservative liquid close it just a little tiny like less than like one eighth of a teaspoon of poop i know this sounds gross shake it up tighten it put it in an envelope seal it up put up if you're in india you will send the you will send the the microbiome thing across to my address we send it to the lab the lab takes 3 to 4 weeks to process this entire report report comes to me and say hi mr xyz let's walk through your microbiome report and then you start getting a diet so we my clinic builds you a separate diet this is the cost only of the testing of the report the diet is separate so we do a diet plan for you now what do you need to do you know me ryan fernando message me on any of one of my social media handles you could call me on 9743430000 uh the cost of the test if it's global it's 400 uh we will check first with your government if biological human samples are allowed to be couriered uh and, and then b- before you register for a test so we'll check which country in the world you are um uh, and if not we can guide you to the microbiome testing in your country uh, and then do a diet plan with us and in india it's 20000 rupees which you pay to the lab directly so we'll guide you on that and then once you get the report you can choose to take a one month a three month a six month or a 12 month plan with a dietitian i advise everybody to do a one year plan because in the first three months you will fail you will fail you will give all the possible excuses in the world people give people say oh i'm very disciplined even olympic guys are not disciplined i'm telling you i am not disciplined i ate lays yesterday i'm a nutritionist and i ate a pack of lays it is human behavior so when you're tied up to a nutritionist you are reporting to your nutritionist 52 times in a year 52 weeks right you talk to me let's say uh, once a month that time when you have the conversation you light up the neurons in your head saying that i am responsible when was the last time you were responsible you were responsible when you were in school after school and college you're not responsible for anything you are the bap you are the ma you are the queen you are the raja you are the king of your life so so where are you responsible to anybody for your health yeah 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 i'm responsible to my wife i'm responsible to my husband i'm responsible to my children ganta you're not responsible get yourself tested and scare the pants off you or scare the poop out of you but get your microbiome corrected because you do not want to get colon cancer when you're 70 because you want to be in disneyland and you know when you're eating that smoothie or drinking that beverage or that alcohol you know the moderation because you've analyzed your microbiome you've analyzed your genetics and you know your qua you know your capacity give us a call hopefully we can change your health thank you for listening so far